Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Class. Hey, I am so glad you're with me this morning. Hey, we're going to uh, kind of dovetail a little bit in on where we was at last week. Last week we talked about being blessed. We talked about why we're being, why we were blessed. We were blessed because God wants to show His power through us. Psalms 106 verse 8 says, Nevertheless, he saved them from, for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power known. That's huge, isn't it? I'm going to actually, I'll finish up with that verse when we finish up in a little bit. Um, today, though, we're going to be talking for the next few weeks about Jesus is our what? And Jesus is our Savior. That's what we're going to talk about today. And I, I'm, I, I'm reminded quite a bit about the Scripture. And by the way, we're going to be kind of all over the board with Scripture today and a lot of it. But um, in Titus, the third chapter, verses 5 and 6, he says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Which he shed on his, which which he shed on us abundantly, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Notice, the only salvation we have is through Jesus. That's it. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. Nothing that we can do here can save us. And how did this happen? It happened by being washed. It happened by being regenerated. It happened through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the only way that it can happen. Again, I told you we're going to be all over the place and with a lot of scripture here more than anything else today. But just remember, Jesus is our Savior. <clears throat> First John, the fourth chapter, verses 13, 14. He says, hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Notice the first part of the last part here of verse 14. He says, Jesus is the Savior of the world. How do we know that he is our Savior. You look at verse 13. He says, here's how we know. We know because he dwells. He says, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Because he's given us his spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within our life. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later here. But when we're saved, we have the Spirit of God in us. We have the Holy Spirit who bears witness with us that we are the sons of God. If we look in Luke, the 19th chapter, in verse number 10, he says, For the Son of Man is come. Why did Jesus come? He had a purpose, his only purpose. Luke 19.10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And who's lost? We're all lost. <laughs> Every single one of us, we're lost. Every single one of us, we need a Savior. I, I, I love a particular hymn. And I'm not going to go through all the verses of it, but I am going to go through the first verse of it. He says, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use, thy folds prepare. That says so much in that first verse, doesn't it? We need a Savior. We need a shepherd. We need somebody to lead us. And then he goes into the chorus. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Thou hast bought us, thine we are. God 
took and purchased us through the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look at John 3.16. Everybody knows it, but I'm going to read verses 16, 17, 18 here. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, that whosoever, who is that that's actually every single one of us? every person in the world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what can we do on our own? The only thing we can do on our own is accept him as our savior, ask for forgiveness, and believe. And that's going to change our life. But let's look at the rest of the verses. He says in verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He is our savior. The only reason God sent Jesus was to save us. And then in verse 18, he tells us something very important. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. The only salvation we have is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. We look at a, a verse that I quote quite often. It's out of Romans 3.23. And he says, For all have sinned. Every single one of us we've sinned, every single one of us has missed the mark that God has set for us. We've all missed the bullseye if we're sitting there playing target practice. Every single one, he says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not one of us has met the standard of God. And then he goes on in verse 24, he says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Notice, we're just as if we'd never sinned. Justified. Being justified freely. How? Through his grace. Through the redemption only that could come to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 25 he says, whom God has sent forth to be a perpetuation to faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. We have forgiveness of sin, and it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through, the, through God himself and the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't do anything to achieve it. And as I think about that fact that we can't achieve it, I, I always think of Ephesians, mainly Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, but I'm going to catch two other verses here. A little bit earlier in the chapter, verse 4, Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 4, he says, but God, I always love that, but God, who is rich in mercy, undeserved mercy here, but God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. God loved us. Well, we were still enemies. God loved us. Verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, we were enemies. Hath he quickened us? He's made us alive together with Christ. And then it says, by grace ye are saved. How are we saved? We're saved by his grace, unmerited favor of God. And then he goes on to the two verses that most of us have memorized. He says, for by grace, unmerited favor of God, are you saved through faith. And by the way, that faith is not just a head knowledge. It's a belief knowledge. It's a changing of our direction that we have. For by grace we're saved through faith. And that not of ourselves. Nothing that we can do. We can't do penance. We can't pay for it. We can't do anything. Not, not that, uh, in that not of yourselves. 
It's a gift of God. What is a gift? A gift is something that's free. Yeah, a lot of times you'll find some sort of a special offer on the internet, right? And, and it says it's a free gift, but all of a sudden they want your credit card. That's not a free gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Now realize that on a gift, we have to receive the gift. Until we receive it, till we open it, it's not ours. And then he goes on in verse 9, not of works. He makes it really clear. We can't do anything to achieve this, lest any man should boast. If we could pay for it, if we could do penance for it, if we could do some special act for it, we'd be boasting, saying, look how great we are, but we can't. It's not possible. In John, the sixth chapter, I told you we was going to have a lot of scripture. I just told you we'd be all over the place. In John, the sixth chapter, verse seven, 47, excuse me, not verse 7, John 6, 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I, verse 48, I am the bread of life. He said here, let's go back. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth, that's not that head knowledge belief. It's a heart belief. It's a changing of our direction belief. When we truly believe something, we act on it. That's the type of a belief factor we're talking about here. He says, when we do that, we have everlasting life. Because he says, I am the bread of life. I am the Savior here. And he tells us how to do it in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask him for forgiveness of our sins. We take and we make this public statement that we are a Christian that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall believe in thine heart. See, this isn't that head knowledge, it's a heart knowledge that changes our life. He says, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That is our only hope, that's our only salvation. We just remember as we go through these next few weeks, we're going to be talking about that what Jesus is. And Jesus is today our Savior. Jesus is what to us? He is our Savior. Hey, this is Alan. I'm going to catch you a little bit later. Thank you so much.